Ann Dutler is one of the most prominent HR advisors in the country. Uh, she found her own practice, Cannibal Institute, back in 2011 with her partners who are also specialized in uh, strategic management and corporate training. So, Ms. Ann Dutler, uh, welcome to the interview. I'm very glad to have you here. Um, as I just briefly explained uh, in the intro, um, you started Ganabel Institute with your partners um, and your main focus is HR um, consultancy as well as strategic development as I understood. Uh, please tell the viewers a little more about your institute. Uh, sure, because I studied human resource management uh, at the Michigan State University mm -hmm. and got the HR certified um, advisor. Mm -hmm. So also I have the over 10 years of experience in HR field. Mm -hmm. uh, our um, Ganabel Institute vision has uh, two objectives. The first one is to help uh, local companies mm -hmm. to become international the key players uh, by developing the human resources. The second one is to help the individuals to become successful, not only in their career, but also in their life. Mm -hmm. So we have the three um, fields uh, you know, to run our services. The first one is the consultant services in uh, consultant services in strategic management, especially in human resource mm -hmm. strategy. Mm -hmm. The second one is the customized and public services. The customized training program is designed uh, to um, based on the needs of the company. Mm -hmm. And the public one is for the design for anyone who wants to improve their personal you know, abilities and productivity. Mm -hmm. the, our, the third area to cover uh, in our the services is to product uh, to produce the product lines mm -hmm. like uh, uh, you know, human um, human development books and notebooks and ed other activities. I see, I see. Okay, um, I'm I'm very glad to have you here. Partly because um, um, throughout this project, we found out human resources is one of the top challenges of doing business in Mongolia, mm -hmm. uh, especially based on the um, interviews with our. Um, other, you know, the 11 other um, business leaders. So um, I would like to ask you, uh, was, uh, um, had, was having human resources, was being human resources and one of the top challenges in Mongolia prompted you to pursue your career in this field? Um, if so, um, how much improvement um, have you seen over the past decade uh, since you uh, got into this field? Oh, there was a lot of improvements going on. So for instance, like um, 10 years ago, when I started this kind of uh, business as a CEO, we trying to approach to the small and medium and even large companies and trying to educate them how training is important to the employees. Then the, in the beginning, they just uh, reacted and said that, oh, the training is like uh, very costly, mm -hmm. you know, giving the training to employees is the very costly. Mm -hmm. Why do we have any benefit? Mm -hmm. It is, we don't see any benefit. After we give training, they probably just leave our companies. Mm -hmm. What's the need? Mm -hmm. So this kind of uh, attitude was very prevailing during that time, mm -hmm. but now they quite changed. Uh, of course, in a better way. Mm -hmm. They understood how it is important. Human resources is a very good asset if you utilize, manage them well. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be you know, liabilities if you can't manage, if you can't retain you know, these employees. Mm -hmm. So it's all depend on the uh, the management level of the company. Right, right. Those who um, manage their human resources uh, uh, good, well, um, must have you know sustained their businesses uh, quite well, especially during this uh, economic uh, downturn over the past few years, right? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. During the uh, past, you know, the economic downsize time, the most of the companies, you know, they thought you know reducing the employees mm -hmm. is the good option, mm -hmm. but in, indeed. It's not you know, a matter of employees, it's a matter of the management mm -hmm. um, strategy. Right. Yeah, right. That's why uh, it it's depends on the, how you see it. Mm -hmm. If you see 
the human source is the liability, then it is your right mm -hmm. to reduce the number of employees. Mm -hmm. But if you think the human source is asset, then you will never, you know, fire them. You instead, mm -hmm. based on the um, human resources, you could be able to find the new solution mm -hmm. to sustain your competitiveness. Right, right. Um, could you share um, us a bit about um, the human resources challenges that are found most commonly in Mongolia, maybe top three challenges you mm -hmm. commonly see among Mongolian organizations or organizations in Mongolia? In terms of company-wise, uh, mm -hmm. There are certain uh, challenges they uh, mostly challenge, face it, mm -hmm. no matter if you are a big company, small company, if you are an international company. But, uh, based on my experiences, the most of the uh, challenge, number one challenge, the companies are facing in terms of HR is turnover. Turnover. Yeah, the turnover is uh, uh, less, no, no more than less than 50 percent. Okay. Some companies even 70 percent. Mm -hmm. So an average about 50 percent. Okay. It's, it's, it's considered a very high number mm -hmm. compared to other developing countries. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate a bit more on the turnover aspect, for example? Okay. For instance, if it's 50 percent means that when you have the 10 employees mm -hmm. and uh, half of them, you know, would leave your company. Ah, right. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like a it's like a flow, right. the employees right. come in and out. Mm -hmm. So when uh, turnover is very high, it's it's very you know it's, it's it, it gives you but it's it's a bad sign. Yeah, that yeah. means you know the you know, employee who work more in uh, years, their uh, productivity mm -hmm. is getting higher time to time, year to year. Unfortunately, once you you know give training, once you uh, facilitated training mm -hmm. and you know once that employee is get used with the job mm -hmm. then after two or three years they just leave the company maybe there are different yeah, exactly. uh, reasons mm -hmm. but the turnover if it's high turnover it's not good sign not at all yeah. uh, and very costly for the companies very costly, yeah. Yeah. yeah the second challenge I see that the, there are many uh, very good companies who give the high salary job to the highly skilled people. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the Mongolian market itself is very small. Mm -hmm. And in terms of population, we have only 3 million people. Mm -hmm. So the um, uh, middle level uh, working forces uh, about over 500,000 people. Mm -hmm. That means uh, Mongolian companies are mostly on a lack of highly skilled employees. Mm -hmm. They are always seeking such employees. Mm -hmm. If they find it, if they find it, they have ability to, to pay the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, the second challenge. Could you share some of the um, uh, profession, exact professions that you are referring as highly skilled? Um, yeah. Sure, it, uh, I can say the two levels. The first mm -hmm. one is highly specialized um, uh, technicians. Mm -hmm. So even though the Mongolian universities produce, you know, give supply a lot of highly specialized and technicians, mm -hmm. the Mongolian uh, demand, labor demand, cannot supply the work demand. Mm -hmm. So demand and supply of the labor has been imbalanced. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the highly skilled technicians couldn't find a job. They had to change the profession in major. The another uh, uh, side, uh, the reason I'm saying that Mongolian people's, uh, the Mongolian companies are lacking of the high, highly skilled professions means very high executive, like mm -hmm. chief financial officers, mm -hmm. uh, chief marketing officers. Mm -hmm. This kind of uh, jobs are still, you know, uh, vacant. Right. Because many of my clients keep asking me, please find in a very good uh, uh, accountant, very good in a chief uh, financial officers, mm -hmm. like human source advisor, something like that. So this kind of, I'm talking about highly executive exactly. job and highly skilled technician. Mm -hmm. So both companies are lacking this kind of uh, employees. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, another side, also Mongolian companies are lacking of low-skilled jobs too. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, low yeah. Mm -hmm. So because everybody started going um, to universities to gain the, you know, the diploma and the, um, the degrees, but you know, there is need in the market where the people with uh, vocational training, for example, mm -hmm. are in demand. Yes, yeah. So that's what I meant. I see, I see. Okay, so uh, two uh, main uh, major problems you named under uh, the... The third one is, uh, it's not a matter of the employees, it's a matter of the company's strategy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, based on my experience, the, the hundreds of uh, Mongolian companies didn't have any humor or strategy. Mm -hmm what kind of people they want to hire, mm -hmm. how to develop them, how to evaluate the performance mm -hmm. fairly. Mm -hmm. And finally, they don't have a strategy to retain the employees exactly. who are uh, given the productivity. I see. That's the point. I see. So there is a, if there is no clear strategy or clear picture for any uh, newcomer or any employee in the system, then uh, it kind of demotivates them to uh, stay loyal to the company or you know, even to plan their personal life in relation to their work um, life. Is that, is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the um, you know, highly executive you know, people and who are very professional people like to find the international companies. Mm -hmm. They want to be employed you know, by the company who take care of these issues, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So the when you, uh, Mongolian companies could able to find the good jobs, the good employees, but they should have been prepared, you know, strategies mm -hmm. to keep them, to improve their productivity. Mm -hmm. that, that is the challenge, one of the three challenges Mongolian companies. I see, very insightful, Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Um, in terms of overcoming the challenges you just mentioned, you know, high turnover, uh, employee turnover, as well as lack of highly skilled professionals, and thirdly, um, unclear or you know the lack of clarity in their human resources um, strategy among the companies or the organizations in Mongolia, what are your um, top maybe three, four, you know, two, three um, solutions or strategies uh, you uh, provide to your clients or you, you know to anyone? Um, who should be, um, who are operating in Mongolia? Mm -hmm. uh, it all depends on the company culture and strategy and mindset of the owner. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if the company uh, founder who has a feeling, who loves his or her employees, mm -hmm. then he would find out the solution to keep the employees. If the founder on the other hand, doesn't uh, you know, love, understand the employees, he only take care of making money, mm -hmm. then the story would be so wrong. You know? right, yeah. <laughs> so um, when I give advices to the uh, company owners, I found out that they didn't have any certain culture mm -hmm. of the, the organization. Even some companies doesn't have any value, a vision. Mm -hmm. So in that case, how come the empl employees, new employees come to the company, mm -hmm. have an ambition to work in the long run? Mm -hmm. So when new uh, employees come in, they hesitate whether I'm going to work in the long term or not. Because mm -hmm. nobody tell me that company has a vision, Co company has a capacity to grow. But in the new or in that case, the new employees just trying to you know um, adjust a few months. Then if that employee doesn't find any you know, reason to stay longer, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, the employee say bye bye. Yeah, and yeah. that happens very um, commonly in Mongolia, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of uh, employees uh, go into new co company, corporation, or even startup, um, and then you know they just stay there for few uh, months or even sometimes few weeks and then they say you know oh, I don't like the you know I don't like uh, how the company is structured or how, how the company is handled I see I see so that means you know um, there's a uh, unclarity yeah. um, in the com company mm -hmm. so it's no wonder that the uh, 
young, energetic, executive people mm -hmm. try to find a job at the um, foreign investment company. Mm -hmm. The reason is that the policy is very clear. Mm -hmm. How to develop how to um, um, evaluate performance, how to you know, um, increase the salary. Yeah. Everything is very clear. I see, and as well as their medical and yeah, health uh, yes, benefits. Yeah. So because of that, you know, foreign investment companies mm -hmm. have a privilege mm -hmm. to find the good, executive, young, energetic yeah. professionals. So in that case, if Mongolian companies or want to attract the, such a potentials, mm -hmm. they need to compete, right? Yes. So in order to compete, mm -hmm. they have a money, they have a land, they have a equipment, office, but they don't have a human resource strategy. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So if the Mongolian companies who have the human resource issues, they need to find, they need to pay attention what they are doing. Exactly. Instead of criticizing the employees. Mm -hmm. So the highly skilled, energetic young professionals like to be employed by uh, foreign investment companies. Mm -hmm. Reason is that these companies, the human resource strategy is very clear. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for um, speaking of uh, foreign invested companies uh, because I was going to ask you about uh, um, the difference um, uh, you see in terms of uh, the human resources practice and management among Mongolian local and uh, foreign uh, invested companies, you know, foreign companies in Mongolia. Um, so let's say on one hand, uh, Mongolian professionals or, uh, you know, the skilled workforce is more attracted to um, international companies or foreign invested companies, bec mostly because of their um, more clear uh, human resources uh, um, strategy as well as you know, the, the package they're offering. But on the other hand, how about uh, the employees, you know, the foreign employees, are they happy to um, employ uh, Mongolians? Uh, are they as happy to mon employ Mongolians as employing um, probably you know, the nationalities from uh, more developed countries or you know, more um, uh, experienced international professionals based mm -hmm. on your experience? Uh, there is no way they won't be, be they wouldn't be happy mm -hmm. because uh, because they able to f uh, hire the highly energetic mm -hmm. you know capable prof prof professional people mm -hmm. that means they have a good human sources so they don't have any um, discrimination you know, between yeah, and the foreign people and the Mongolian people. It's all, it's the, the, the rule and the structure and everything is clear. Mm -hmm. And also the international companies do not discriminate against the uh, racism, against the uh, age mm -hmm. and even the sex. But in the Mongolian companies, you probably notice that you know Mongolian companies, you need to be you know certain age from 25 to 35. Mm -hmm. You need to be high. It's, it's very discriminative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a. It's all that depends on the company's culture, and the, when when I uh, work with the international companies, I mean the foreign investment companies, they uh, give certain, you know, they face uh, certain challenges when they work with the Mongolian people. Yes. So I give uh, several uh, lectures and seminars how to understand the Mongolians, right. <laughs> how to communicate the Mongolians effectively mm. for the foreign um, officials mm. and the foreign uh, employees mm -hmm. and employers. Mm -hmm. There is a reason they, you know, argument with each other. Mm. The, the reason is very simple. Okay. Because the, the way they see the work mm -hmm. is totally different. Mm. I'm share, yeah, share. some examples. I'm talking about in majority, mm -hmm. okay? Because there are certain uh, Mongolian professionals who are very highly you know, skilled in terms of soft and hard skills. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in majority. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Mongolian, the foreign uh, employers and need to understand the Mongolian people's mentality. Mm -hmm. You know that Mongolian uh, human resources has been developed in more than 25 years before we have the different system. Yes. Now the capitalist system has only 
25 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Then the Mongolian people's attitude to work quite different. Mm -hmm. The Mongolian people are very calm. They don't hurry that much. Mm -hmm. right? They don't plan in uh, small items. Mm -hmm. They think as a whole. Okay. They think this when the items as a whole. Mm -hmm. So once they need, mm -hmm. they can you know divide into small stuff. Uh, otherwise, they do. They usually just see in general. Okay. And also, the Mongolian people's um, IQ is very high, mm -hmm. but EQ is very low. Mm -hmm. Very means they don't have a time to improve, develop the emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So once um, Mongolian uh, mentality has been understood by foreign employers, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be any argument mm -hmm. because they understand the mentality of Mongolian people, then they find the solution how to communicate with I Mongolians. See. I see. So it's not uh, individual specific, but it's more of, you know, um, national or, or, you know, something that uh, um, you can see uh, across uh, the human resources or the, you know, the workforce in Mongolia, mm -hmm. you're suggesting. I see. Um, could you share some of the um, examples of, uh, you know, the EQ uh, that Mongolian workforce commonly uh, lack of? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The EQ could be how to uh, communicate with your employee tactfully. Mm -hmm. So if you say something, um, say something that that person made a mistake, the Mongolian people just said, you made that mistake. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> very direct, you know, uh -huh. communication, straightforward. straightforward. Uh -huh. But if you have emotional IQ, if you have an EQ mm -hmm. high, mm -hmm. then you would find the way mm -hmm. To uh, to soften find the way, it, yeah? soften it, uh -huh. to make that person understand mm -hmm. the uh, mistake. So in that case, that person who who made the mistake realize mm -hmm. and recognize that he made the mistake. Mm -hmm. So such kind of small, you know, communication mm -hmm. um, gesture. Mm -hmm. I see. Do you uh, do you provide uh, communication uh, or cultural advice to your foreign clients? Yeah. Uh, once they have some problems and didn't find a solution, they approach it to us. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have such such a training program. But mm -hmm. that they had the needs, and based on the needs, uh, I formulate the training program and okay. give the training for. Them. Uh -huh. Then after the training, they um, uh, were very thankful to me because they said that for many years I didn't understand Mongolians. Mm -hmm. Now I understand Mongolians. Now I find the solution how to you know work with Mongolians effectively I and see. efficiently. I see. Could you share uh, some of the insights of that uh, um, you know effective training to uh, yeah you provided for your foreign clients? Some of the insights, yeah. Sure. For instance, uh, there was one company, it was the European company, mm -hmm. I don't want to say the name of, of the company and the country, mm -hmm. the, that European uh, foreign investment company owner had a problem communicating with Mongolians. Mm -hmm. Then when we find the, the argument from both sides, mm -hmm. because I talked to that uh, uh, foreign um, bo boss, mm -hmm. foreign um, employer, employer mm -hmm. and the Mongolian employees. What was the argument? Uh -huh. Why they didn't understand each other? Mm -hmm. Then they gave the points. Mm -hmm. The points they say is right for them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But they don't understand mm -hmm. uh, each other. Uh -huh. The problem was that that friend, uh, that company, as uh, owner, was very aristocratic. Mm -hmm. Personal, they, he got a scratic personality. That means trying to un underestimate the people, mm -hmm. you know. But the uh, Mongolian kind of people, down. yeah, looked down. But Mongolian people don't like maltreatment. So Mongolian people, uh, you know, high ambitious, mm -hmm. ambitious goal, and they don't want to be, you know, seen as someone uh -huh. 
at the lower I see I see, see yeah it's I the mean, mentality yeah. exactly yeah yeah actually you know um, in one of my interviews with uh, in one of the business leaders uh, um, a European business leader actually um, he said um, he kind of saw Mongolians as very entrepreneurial mm -hmm. and he, he said you know maybe uh, for every Mongolian they, they have a dream to have a business of their own yeah. <laughs> I see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second uh, argument they had was that the person is that the employer was very punctual, mm -hmm. very, very detail oriented. But the Mongolian people didn't plan that well. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you know, Cultural walking, difference. the walking attitude, mm -hmm. you know, culture mm -hmm. made them uh, misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I gave the training to the Mongolian employees that we are you know, we, our working environment and working style is totally different from them. Mm -hmm. And European people, and they are very focused. Mm -hmm. They are time punctual. Their EQ is high. Mm -hmm. and also, they are detail-oriented. After they plan is small, they could be able to find the, uh, as a big uh, picture. Mm -hmm. But in Mongolian side, they see as a they see as a the items as a whole, but later on, if necessary, mm -hmm. they plan it in small, mm. small steps. But most of the time, they don't plan it in small steps. Mm -hmm. You know, they just think as a whole. I see. There is a goal here, and we have to get there. Yeah, but <laughs> but the, yeah, they, uh -huh. they are not. Uh, you know, hard enough mm. to think about how, you I know. See, <laughs> so this kind of misunderstanding, you know, occurred mm. in between foreign people and Mongolian people. Mm. Otherwise, the uh, foreign uh, employers really value how intelligent Mongolian people are. Mm -hmm. And the IQ is very high. And mm. also the quick learner, they appreciate how quick Mongolian people learn. Exactly, so and the language ability is very yeah. high. They speak, they, they learn the foreign language very fast, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So the, even though Mongolian human resources are limited in terms of quantity, mm -hmm. but in terms of quality, Mongolian human resources is very highly energetic and highly asset driven. People. I see. So it's a matter of the management at any organization to see the potentials, the real potentials of Mongolians and having bearing in their mind the, the potential um, risks uh, related to, you know, the difference in their cultures and the difference in their communication styles, etc. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, how uh, all these make a difference in how successful and sustainable the business can be run. I see that those are very valuable, very very valuable insights um, and discussion. I think you know the, our intended target audience, um, who we believe to be entrepreneurs and uh, investors, uh, mostly foreigners uh, uh, interested in doing business in Mongolia, um, have uh, gained some insights uh, related to Mongolian human resources, Mongolian workforce, or the Mongolians in general from your discussion. And I would like to welcome your final comments and thoughts on whoever um, watching the, the show, the interview, and then thinking you know, whether they should be coming into Mongolia to do business, and if so, how they should uh, um, leverage uh, the, the potentials uh, of the Mongolian workforce. Um, uh, the, those who want to, you know, open the, its company in Mongolia, mm -hmm. you have a very big potential for Mongolian for in Mongolian market because Mongolian market is emerging, fast, and uh, developing uh, country. So, um, in terms of the human resources, if your company has um, very strong human resource strategy, mm -hmm. you can find the pers uh, employees that you really want. Mm -hmm. And these people can give you the value. And these people give you the new ideas. They, these people give you a high productivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once you've, you know, before you enter in that, please make sure to develop your human source strategy. Once you did that, you don't need to worry about the human sources. I see. Uh, by the way, um, 
finding a local partner, reliable and uh, um, efficient local partner in Mongolia was also named to be one of the top solutions or in the top tips for anyone uh, entering the market uh, uh, as a newcomer. Would you, would you agree with that? Would you also suggest finding a good partner uh, in the country as one of the you know, top solutions to addressing potential human resources challenges? Yeah, totally. I agree with you. Because if you find the uh, local uh, partner, it would be much, much easier mm -hmm. uh, for the foreign companies to penetrate the market, mm -hmm. to find the market share, to find the market share and improve the market share in a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the good advice is to find a reliable local partner. Mm -hmm, I see. And uh, maybe, you know, after um, or even before you come into Mongolia, if you need any help with uh, your um, human resources uh, strategy or planning, go talk to Ms. Kandalgar or Kandabel Institute. Okay, thank you very much for your um, insightful discussion and I hope uh, it's been useful for our viewers. Thank you. Thank you.